the best way I can put it is if you think of it like a radio broadcast, because that's live, you're listening to a voice, but imagine that you actually have a background or a live background going on at the same time. So I could be sitting here talking to you while there, I'm also playing a game in the background or even doing that activity. It's not just gaming, but that's that's the kind of channel that I've gone down when it comes to down to streaming, definitely so. But streaming in general is a very weird and wonderful world if you ever go down the rabbit hole. It's, um, there's some... There's some strange communities out there that <laughs> I suggest you check out out of curiosity, like ASMR, if you've ever heard of it. I'm Chris O'Hare, your quick win CEO. And as a CEO, I've run many businesses, founded startups, consultant for others, and even won awards. But in this show, we'll be talking to entrepreneurs and experts to help you understand key concepts for your business, along with three quick wins that you can take away and apply to your business today. And every week, we'll be finding out about the entrepreneur themselves and diving into a different but important topic. Competition time. I'm giving away 10 of my favorite business books, including Lean Startup and Business Model Canvas to one lucky winner. These are great for all levels of skill, from a CEO to a founder. And to enter, all you need to do is go to Apple Podcasts, subscribe, then scroll to the bottom and leave a review. It doesn't have to be detailed, you could just say that you love this podcast. And then when you've done that, email quickwinceo at hair.digital to say that you've entered. So, we have a great show for you today. If you've never heard of video game streaming, then this episode is for you. It's a rapidly growing industry with the average viewer spending 95 minutes per day on its app. That's three times more than Instagram. That's a mind-blowing statistic, and streaming is incredibly sticky. Tom Young, a semi-professional streamer, tells us about how he turned his evening hobby of gaming into a main job by building his own fan base and earning money through sponsorship and tips from viewers. Tom also tells us about how you could use streaming for your business today. It's going to be an interesting episode, so here we go, Tom Young. Thanks for coming on this show, Tom. Firstly... Tell me the last thing that you read or watched or did that left an impression on you. It could be a Netflix series, a funny video, a book that you read, anything. Uh, Tell you what, the the last thing that I actually watched was with my wife last night, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It was at Christmas at KFC. I don't know if you watched it. It was on Channel 4, and oh my goodness, you got to see... It was a bit a bit like being a, a fly on the wall. You were able to see how the inner workings of KFC works and how they think and how they manage uh, their marketing campaigns and how they want to brand themselves moving forward. And I thought that was really kind of interesting, their approach to a lot of things um, and how... I guess humanistic it was rather than being very corporate It was very much fun loving and family orientated, which I I didn't really expect from KFC. Uh, just talking about it now weirds me out a little bit, but yeah, I thought that was really fantastic. So if anyone gets a chance to watch that, I suggest you do because I thought it was pretty, it was all about gravy as well. And I was hungry afterwards. So, <laughs> yeah. The gravy is pretty good. Um, yeah, but in terms of it, uh, was it a store itself or did they follow a doc- documentary about a store? Or was it like the, the headquarters? The whole thing, the whole company the whole from thing. the store to the headquarters, to their right. marketing, to their branding, uh, as well as also to their innovations team. Like you literally saw it from, the ground upwards and and back downwards as well and how it's been affected since uh, COVID-19. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely a good watch as well. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah. 100%. I think um, it's nice to see the different perspectives of different retail type businesses and how we can apply that to branding and marketing. I uh, know that's definitely uh, key to your heart is um, looking at the different variations of marketing. And I guess that's what... Um, is why you're here today is because you're, you're so different and you're doing a di- very different way of getting yourself out there. So 
that's a nice segue into um tell me what it is that you do uh what's your business do what's your day job what's your, your evening job um and kind of how did you get here uh, okay uh so to answer with uh the first part of it so the business that i have i guess is i run my own business as a streamer uh, uh which is something that was a originally a hobby and something to kill time that then transformed into an actual job opportunity for myself to actually earn some passive income and then that actually spread into different passive incomes rather than just one thing i learned how to diversify my money and essentially try and make it so i'm self-sustaining without actually having to be uh, on somebody else's payroll i could be on my own one so um i started streaming more or less for the reason of i hated playing games on my own a bit like uh how to uh, how do i explain it uh it, i was playing a lot of uh, online multiplayer games but i wasn't enjoying it because i wasn't playing it with friends because i didn't really have that kind of pc based gamer friends at that point in time and uh, I also was really into single player games like Skyrim or, or Elder Scrolls or anything like that. Um, but I wanted to share that opportunity with other people. Uh, I then discovered that there was a thing called streaming. Uh, there was Twitch, there was YouTube and all these things. And I could see that you could actually still have the single player experience, but be able to share it with other people in a live thing and not kind of be interrupted by somebody talking in, in your ear or anything like that. You can still be immersed while also uh sharing that emotional connection with somebody else um and i really really enjoyed that so it kind of turned from a hobby of gaming to a hobby of streaming to then something that actually pays a lot of the bills on month on month so uh yeah I, you could say with me i'm a streamer and broadcaster but when it comes to uh my day job i'm actually in uh digital marketing uh and i've just landed that job I've been doing it for a few months now, and I think that's because of uh, the streaming that I do now that gave me the confidence to kind of go into that realm and also better myself and get, gain the skills that I need to uh, do better in my streaming work. Yeah. That sounds that's really interesting. <laughs> but it's it makes a lot of sense um, that you had this desire for passive income to enable you to do other things, right? But I, yeah. I didn't know that actually the marketing came out of the the streaming yeah i want to yeah. know how did that come about how did how did they find out about you um uh, so it wasn't the fact that they found me it was more of the fact that i found them um marketing was always something that i really wanted to get into anyway because it really interested me but i never really knew how to break into that world uh, and then unfortunately because of covid i became redundant uh, in my previous job but that was actually working in the health sector um, and I just saw an opportunity uh, to kind of gain more skills at, without having to abandon the skills that I've learned throughout my actual like daytime career. And uh, a lot of it was of the conversation that I had during my interviews, because it was three stages, was around the fact that I know a lot about uh, digital prowess, about uh, branding, as well as also um, social media and how I can actually bring that knowledge into the business uh, a little bit further and also benefit them while also benefiting me. Um, and since then, uh, we've been working together really closely about what I think, what they think, and uh, putting our heads together. And uh, yeah, I 100% believe that because of streaming, I actually got me in the job that I have now as a daytime. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. That's, that's really awesome. I mean, are you an accidental entrepreneur or would you say... Uh, I would definitely say it's an accidental entrepreneur. Uh, okay. I, it, it started off accidental and now it's incidental because okay. I didn't think I could make money and now I know I can make money and how I can expand that. So, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, um, I mean, what makes you get out of bed in the morning to actually get on and do this? Uh, 
it's a combination of things really i would say uh my passion for gaming uh the more of the fact that like i can't sit around and do nothing really i always have to be doing something and this is something that i'm passionate about marketing social media and just gaming in general um and i think it's more of the fact that like if you know what streaming is it's not just about like making money through broadcasting and uh, branding or anything like that but it's also about the community that you build behind it of like-minded people and that's what kind of gets me out of bed for streaming and when it comes to what gets me out of bed for my daytime job is the fact that I get to better myself and also get paid for that so yeah definitely yeah those things so you got made redundant yeah. and you uh, I'm assuming you were worried about money oh yeah okay. yeah and you were you streaming before you were made redundant or yeah yeah right. I've so actually, you monetized it basically yeah. over covid okay yeah yeah i really started to think seriously about moving it forward into more passive incomes yeah because previously i was just relying on one income source which was directly from twitch whereas because of the redundancy uh, and what that forced me to do and think about, well, how am I going to pay the next bill? I then start, started looking at different ways to increase my net, I guess, uh, my net worth. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it's been a fun old, fun old journey as well, because you get to see in the job that I do now uh, in digital marketing, you get to see behind the curtains and how these large businesses who work with even larger businesses kind of do the exact same thing mm. so yeah okay. i'm doing it on a small scale but they're doing it on a bigger scale so yeah so let's talk about what it is i mean i, I don't think we've kind of really covered what video game streaming is can you give me a description for our audience so, so, i mean i obviously i i watch streamers all, all day <laughs> every day but um <laughs> let, let's let's try and uh you know translate that to the audience uh, the best way I can put it is if you think of it like a radio broadcast, because that's live, you're listening to a voice. Um, but imagine that you actually have a background or a live background going on at the same time. So I could be sitting here talking to you uh, while there, I'm also playing a game in the background or even doing an activity. It's not just gaming, but that's the that's the kind of channel that i've gone down when it comes to down to streaming uh definitely so but uh streaming in general is a very weird and wonderful world if you ever go down the rabbit hole it's um there's some there's some strange communities out there that <laughs> i suggest you check out out of curiosity like asmr if you've ever heard of it i have heard of asmr <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i, mean, I do find uh... that strange there was um there's a <laughs> there's one i i think of quite regularly um not necessarily a streaming but it was youtube videos called tasty pc um, yeah um and yeah there's some asmr manipulation going on there um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if anyone if everyone wants to go check out tasty pc on youtube they, they might get some uh, more views but yeah they're they're, they're milking the benefit of asmr um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. but if, if no one knows what asmr is it's essentially um this uh, involuntary response if someone whispers in your ear you get uh, tingles down the back of your spine and you feel um it's almost like an erogenous uh, reaction it can right? be it can yeah. be um so yeah and, and actually it doesn't um not everyone gets it i think it's a gene so yeah. some people have the gene get this um, feeling I, I notice i have it but if you put in headphones and and someone um does asmr into a really good microphone um she it's usually the smacking of lips and the, and the noises of the of the lips right that's that's yeah. and the, and the and the saliva in the mouth weird so yeah. weird <laughs> <laughs> i never thought this would go down this journey <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have, a, I have a tendency to do that of derailing stuff. But yeah, no, it's streaming. There's so many categories to it. But yeah, with gaming, uh, it's definitely 
the one that I've decided to go down to because it's something that I relate to the most. Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, you talk about Twitch. Yes. And um, a lot of people actually might not have heard of Twitch unless you're in the scene. Um, yeah. or, or you're someone, you know, who avidly watches, um, you know, video game streamers. What is Twitch? Uh, so Twitch is the streaming platform uh, that you can actually go on to uh, right now, twitch.tv. Um, and that's actually owned and run by Amazon Prime. Uh, so they actually own, own the business and have been doing it for quite some time. They were actually probably the biggest streaming platform out there. But now YouTube has obviously gone into that. You've probably seen Facebook have also gone into it. Uh, there are also some uh, smaller uh, platforms like DLive uh, and some other ones I can't think of the top of my head, but the most notable ones are Twitch. Um, and they kind of set the foreground and the structure of how streaming should be done, but not necessarily are getting it right anymore because with everything evolving, I think eyes are elsewhere, I guess, at the moment. Mm. So discoverability okay. is difficult especially yeah. when it comes down to Twitch, because there's a lot of streamers out there. Well, that's the thing, right? It's standing out um, against your your uh, competition, and, and that's Marketing 101, right? So <laughs> yeah. I, I can see how the two uh, correlate. So that's that's really interesting. I mean, let's let's talk about how you stream in terms of what, what kit you use to stream and kind of what is it that um, you do on a uh, in terms of a, a stream. Uh, so the kit that I use, you could probably see the, the microphone that I have on a stand um, here, which is a Rode um, U USB mic. I can't remember the top of my head, actually. I do actually have a list somewhere, if I can get it out quickly. It's probably the same as mine, life. actually. Uh, uh, I've got a, a Rode mic. Yeah, Rode mics are one of the best. I don't know. No, that's not like a sponsorship or anything like that. It's like it's the, probably the best mic that I've actually ever owned. Um, Road, if you hear us, sponsor yeah, us. <laughs> please sponsor me. I want your money. But yeah, no, uh, it's it's uh, it's a really good company to actually even get any of that stuff. Uh, let's see my channel and go into my about because I listed it all off a long time ago. Yeah, so the equipment that I use is I've quite fortunate to uh, have a very expensive PC that can not only stream, but also run games in high quality and also uh, handle a higher bit rate. So that way the stream quality that I see can then translate to other people's computers a lot better. Because uh, if you've got a low end PC or a console or anything like that, it's normally beneficial that you have like an external PC to kind of handle the, the streaming side um, while the other PC or console handles the gaming side of things. But luckily I've got quite a beefy computer that does all of that for me. Um, it's like Intel i9 processor, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, DDR4. Uh, you've got the PCU, which is the Corsair TX 650. ASOS mo uh, uh, motherboard GPU is the uh, new RTX graphics card the 2080 ti so it's the okay. super version overclocked not, not got the 3080 yet <laughs> no don't have enough money for that no not yet <laughs> <laughs> um too much memory as in like i've got two um solid state drives and one hard uh, just hard drive and ridiculous amounts of lighting whether it be mood lighting or even the illegato uh can't even remember what they're called, but yeah, I can just turn them off on a button and turn them back on. And it's like key of, light or something. I think that's, that's the that's one. Key light. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, and essentially, that's all you need: a PC, a mic, and your camera. I'm assuming is a uh, is it? A, a yeah, it's DSLR? not essential, but it's better. Yeah, I am using a DSLR now. Uh, the one that you can see me on is actually my uh, Brio 4K camera, which is a webcam specifically by. Um, Logitech, but uh, I actually have a DSLR that I use for streaming now, which is one of my newest toys, but before then a webcam. Yeah. All I would say is the most important things to have as a streamer is good lighting, uh, a cheap webcam to start off with, uh, a microphone that can be optimized correctly, and a PC that can handle you streaming. 
that you I when I first ever started the equipment that I had I pro was probably between 300 pounds worth of stuff only 300 quid mm. and I was using a lamp next to me for my lighting or anything and now that's grown to the equipment that I have now which is over 8,000 pounds worth of of stuff and I know that because I won most of it in the competition <laughs> so, oh, wow. yeah so that's yeah. fantastic well, yeah there you go right. yeah okay so You've explained what the, the, the kind of the kit is, but what do you do on a stream? What is it that you actually do? Obviously you play a video game yeah, and, and you, you communicate with the audience, but what's the, the kind of general agenda of what, how you would go through a, a stream so people uh, can understand that? Okay, so for me, um, I've kind of set the agenda in different phases. So uh, phase one is introductions and explanation. So uh, the first half an hour of the stream is mostly uh, just talking, uh, doing the introduction, talking to the community that I've built, because uh, you have a, a live chat going off all the time. Uh, mostly having a conversation about that, then setting the agenda for the day. So uh, most of my days is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday is an interactive game, so everyone else can join in. Uh, or Wednesdays is horror games, so I will either play Resident Evil at the moment or uh, a multiplayer game, so other people can join in if they want to. And then on a Friday is a creative or chill stream uh, where I will try out a different skill and I kind of endorse other people to uh, to join in on that. So that could be from something digital to something physical. So one point I did origami, whereas another week I did uh, music production. So right. yeah, um, that's what I kind of set my agenda to. It's not always about gaming, but it's always about the kind of communal feeling. And that's the, the focus that I've been on. Whereas you'll see other gamers, they mostly focus on maybe being the top uh, person in a game whereas I'm more about the connection that I have between uh, an individual or a group of people um, because if you think about it uh, people go onto streams or they watch videos for escapism uh, so I want to be that person that they escape to because I want to <laughs> basically it's it's proven successful for me I get a lot of self gratification out of it. And it just means that should uh, income come from that, be that uh, through a subscription or a, uh, uh, a, monetized, a monetized sponsorship, uh, then happy days. So, and, and that happens quite regularly. So I'm happy with that. I've seen your stream and you, you have all this energy and you're talking about various things. You've got the chat popping up. And, and I'm thinking, how are you, one, how are you coming up with all this um, <laughs> content, right? <laughs> how do you keep up the energy? Yeah. And, um, and three, how are you getting this engagement from the community? Because that is a massive part of streaming. It's that engagement from the community that, they, that they're hooked and they want to come back and they want to see more of you because there's so many streamers out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh that's a good question, really. Um, I'll ask so the last one first, I guess. Uh, so in terms of how I make people come back is a more, again, uh, touching on the personalized side of things. So if you think of it like this, uh, people are attracted to streaming because it's live content. And what's more interesting than seeing someone's content, say, for example, on YouTube or Instagram, or uh, even on Twitter, and they really like that content, and they were like, oh, that's really interesting. Um, and then they find out that that person that they like their, their content for that isn't live actually streams live, and you can have an interaction with them. You can actually speak to them. I mean, that's bloody, that's mind-blowing to a lot of people. And if you kind of capitalize on that, then it can be one of the most serious weapons in your arsenal. So I normally focus on uh, open-ended questions uh, for people, but I also do reaffirming um, conversations. So I will, uh, you'll probably hear me pick out a name or if somebody's talking, I'll re reiterate or say what they've said so they know I'm speaking to them mm -hmm. and then I'll answer their question. So that way they know I've acknowledged them 
and then also I'm, I'm able to give them a tailored answer back as well. It, I know it sounds really robotic if I kind of break it down like that, but because I've done it so much over the last, I think, two years or so, it's become just more of a natural thing. When it first ever started, though, it was very robotic, but um, it is something that you have to acknowledge the person, make sure that they feel part of the experience of yours, but also the community that you've built. And you can only do that by, again, content on multiple platforms that then funnel into the, the one thing that you want to promote being mine and streaming. So yeah, uh, I hope that answers the first question. The energy one, um, a lot of coffee. <laughs> the, the, yeah, it's just a lot of coffee. Uh, a lot of coffee and the fact that um, I genuinely get excited to stream because everyone has that kind of uh, thing that helps them relax or it, and streaming has become that thing that helps me relax. That's my downtime. That's my time away from the missus. That's my time uh, and my time to shine. And I see that as my opportunity every time. So yeah, that's how I keep the energy up. That's and really coffee. interesting it, because for me, um, doing these interviews, doing these podcasts, um, I know some of my energy levels massively increase and one I'm excited to learn from, yeah. you know, a pro like yourself and, but also to have a, just a really good conversation, which you don't necessarily get on a day-to-day -day basis. It's usually about work or it's usually about something that's um, not outside your remit of, yeah. of, uh, of life. Right. And that's, that's, I know exactly what you mean. And you've also yeah. built this community of friends, right? So these, yeah. they're almost friends. I mean, there's some of them because I've heard you mention the same names a few times because I've watched them and, I, and they must come back every single time and talk to you. And they're essentially a virtual friend. Have you ever met yeah. any of these friends in real life? Uh, one. One uh, person, actually, uh, so far, and that was before COVID times. Um, I, it was a coincidence, really, um, more of the fact that at one of my previous jobs, I had to go for training up in a place that I've never been before. I mentioned it uh, in the stream, and they were, oh, I'm actually around that area. I actually live where you're going. Like, do you fancy go for a pint? And I was like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. You know, like, I knew the person for a number of months. It wasn't one of the people that just came in and was just like, oh, I know this place. I'm coming in. No, I, I knew them for quite some time. We had built trust with each other. And uh, yeah, it was actually a really good night. And they gave me a gift. That was really nice, which was a pair of rubber testicles that go on the back of a bike because <laughs> I would cycle to work. And they knew that detail about me. So uh, yeah, it's... It, it is one of those things where you, you do have reoccurring people because you've built that that from the ground up. You've built that connection. You've made them feel valued as a human being. And they kind of make you feel valued by coming up again. Because it's free to watch someone, isn't it, really? Um, going the next step to monetization for those people um, is their choice. You just need to make it um, more of a value to them because if you make it so, oh, I just want your money and they're not going to get anything out of it, that can be uh, the end of your streaming career, really. If you just make it all about money, you need to make sure that you're transparent about everything. Um, and that's what I am. It's really interesting that it, they gave you a gift, like almost that you're a celebrity and they were giving <laughs> you something to make you feel... Um, I don't know, uh, they're, they're saying thank you to you for obviously giving you that, that value, but also like um, buying your love in a way. <laughs> and it, it's not the first time I've heard this, right? Because yeah. um, obviously I watch YouTube quite a bit in terms of uh, the creators. And there was one YouTuber that I particularly watched for a while. It's funny how you get you, you get fixed on one person before you move on to another thing. I don't, I don't know what that is, um, but that's really interesting and, and something I want to... Uh, cover with you because I actually think YouTube versus streaming there's a there's definitely a difference in terms of the audience but yeah. we'll, we'll cost that again in a minute but his name is Simon Wilson um, and he, he basically backpacked across America with no money oh yep yeah, I, I have you heard of this guy. guy yeah yeah I've yeah, heard yeah, of this yeah. fellow yeah and he, he basically asked his audience uh, it, um, it's, he, he basically went on Instagram and he was like look, I'm making a, uh, I'm backpacking across America. I'm making this trip with no money. 
uh, is there anyone that can help me out? And he basically got all this money, all these gifts. He got um, people picking him up, staying, used to take him to a restaurant, give him food. And he <laughs> essentially got from New York to, to LA in, um, or is it San Fran? It could have been San Fran. But anyway, from people's generosity. Yeah. And that is what that said to me, that once you get to a certain uh, celebrity status, people almost, there's this barrier that drops and they're yeah. willing to give you something and become either your friend yeah. or to buy your love. Or I, I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's, it's, it's mad. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they do. Yeah, you become a, uh, they become a true supporter, I would say. They would and and they become a community member uh and it is a bizarre feeling because you feel like um at first you will feel like uh that they owe, well they kind of own you in, a, in, a, in an aspect because mm. they they've given you money really and you you kind of feel obliged to kind of give something back to a degree but you soon realize that actually those things are gifts and people don't when it comes to those uh, those gifts, whether it be monetize, uh, monetized things or even sharing your content, those are gifts that don't cost anything. Um, you you soon realize that you can drop that that kind of idea of hang on a second, this person I owe this person for being able to pay their light thing because they've done it out of their own kindness. If someone gives you a gift with the idea of getting a gift back, then it's not really a gift, is it? It's just a transaction of money moving to other places. So if you always view the money that you receive as a gift and something that you've earned from the content that you do or what you produce, then really that kind of psyche um, drops that drop mm. pretty quickly. I, does that make sense? I, uh, I hope yeah. it does. Yeah. 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 It does make sense. I think, the thing is, as well, is that you're giving all your time away for free to, to yeah. engage these people and be their friends. And um, and so there's some value there for them anyway. So that's, you yeah. know, they've, they've had 10 times the amount of value that, that those pair of bollocks. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So we know what streaming is. We know what you do. Um, but let's talk about the audience, right? How are you building this audience? I've heard you keep sustaining the audience and keeping them, but how are you growing them? How are you getting more attention? How are you getting people in? Um, so there, is, well, it's diversification, uh, I would say, of my content. Um, and uh, I would say my biggest weapon uh, that I've actually had um, is probably, um, in, in, yeah, Instagram. Instagram's probably been my biggest weapon and in, in my arsenal of things. But I would say as a vague or branch term would be social media. Social media uh, is just another means or another channel. My nose has gone really blocked, if you could hear that. <laughs> um, uh, it's just another means or another channel for you to actually grow yourself. And if you do it right, and you manage your time uh, correctly and engage correctly, uh, it can really, uh, you can really like yield some results uh, from it, for, like in, in the matter of weeks, like, yeah. or even days. Like uh, the best way for me to put it in perspective, uh, when I decided to take Instagram seriously in terms of engagement and the content that I produce, I was able to turn an account that only had, um, I would say, uh, I think it was 400 people who weren't active on my Instagram account. Within a month, I was able to turn that to 1,600 people who were actually active and engaged with the content that I produced on Instagram. That then funneled them to my stream. And I saw probably a return from my Instagram to my uh, from my twitch uh, in viewership and engagement wise that probably went up by because of that month of engagement uh i would say yeah 100 percent. i think my numbers doubled just from the small amount of effort that i took out my day to use instagram correctly i did a lot of studying of how to get it to the right sort of tune for me um and that definitely yielded some profitable and um, positive results for me really interesting to hear what what's your favorite 
um, post than that you did on Instagram that just had a, a massive boost? Uh, favorite post? Oh, God. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't have a favorite because I have to like the content that I'm producing <laughs> <laughs> to put out. So I would say all of my content is the favorite because I don't like to go uh, half assed with anything. It's either all or nothing, really. If I don't like something, then how can I expect someone else to like something? It, that's my kind of ethos. Yeah. Uh, 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 with with everything and I don't produce this something for the sake of producing it I produce it because I want to produce it and I think somebody else will find value um, out of it and um, whether that be comedy educational or even um, kind of emotional value out of it those are the kind of things that I try to 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 hit on most okay of the time. what's what's the most impactful then what's wh which is the one that went almost viral Oh, oh, okay. So the one that went almost viral was when I first ever got my green screen. Um, I produced, I, you've probably seen it on one of my streams. I have like a kaleidoscope background whenever I put the uh, green screen up. Mm. But I wanted to recreate the scene from Queen um, where it's just the faces in, in, with a black silhouette. Um, so I copied and pasted my camera so it would be all around the screen and we were all just moving in tandem and I clipped that and put that on my Instagram as well as also on Twitter and it ended up get, being recognized by Iligato the actual company who produces the green screen amazing uh, they ended up sharing that uh, on there and it ended up getting I think it was 60,000 views within the first uh, two hours um, and that was one of the most impactful because it was comedy value but it was also value to people to sit, say this is what you can do with a green mm. screen this is just an idiot like literally in front of a camera just not knowing what he, he does but he's able to produce something with something so simple um and yeah that was probably the most impactful piece of thing i had from a promotion for somebody else um and yeah yeah definitely that, that's the same with me it's like I, one of my posts got um shared by the people who that I was tagging in there and that was it. So it's making your content novel enough for them to want to share. And I think yeah. that is, that is a, I think that could be one of your quick wins because um, yeah. I genuinely think that's a hack yeah. that I think yeah. people should know about. 100% agree with you on that one. I think if you produce something worth sharing and that's worth of notable to the business that you want to aim that at, 100% mm. that is a massive tool and a massive yeah. win yeah. Uh, for anyone. So one of my friends um, basically did, did that and they they focused on an author of a book and yeah. they, were, they were talking about this book that they were, were doing and then uh, they, they, were, they were basically reviewing a business on this business model, I think it was business model canvas. And what had happened is that author had reshared that post, that that video. And really? his his views and his likes and whatever just went through the roof. And he got yeah. um and you know way more subscribers for for that. So yeah, um something I've learned my lesson and I tried that and I did. I managed to get um someone to reshare my one and that had a, a lot more hits and others yeah. so uh yeah do that 100 percent. okay so we know so we're talking about numbers right we're talking about you know likes and and followers and shares or whatever yeah how are you keeping track of these analytics what are you doing you got a methodical process around that uh so with myself uh with keeping track if it was to do with uh instagram i am uh, i look at the insights that they provide you i could invest in some uh management tools to have a look at the insights but there isn't i like there's nothing that i want to i'm interested in because i'd rather keep that side of things as simple as possible for me rather than having to stress myself out because that would take away my passion in a way but uh when it comes to checking out my my vanity matrix uh when it comes to social media i am checking the insights out quite regularly to see what people are responding to and what kind of hashtags are working because um, you'll find with Instagram is it's a very fickle thing with the hashtags that you use uh, because everything's so visual. It's there are ticks, uh, trip, tr uh, tricks that you can do to make sure that those hashtags that you're using are being 
utilized properly by you as well as also other users because it's pointless you just chucking in a whole bunch of hashtags on an image that's about a dog but the hashtags are all about a plane does that make sense it's like you need to make sure that they're relevant and of value to everyone including your your yourself so yeah if anyone uh needs a tip i would definitely say invest some time in understanding the algorithm and the, the the back end of Instagram to make sure that you're getting positive growth rather than uh, false growth. Because what I would say is false growth is there are thousands of bots um, on Instagram that are linked to a hashtag and they'll like your stuff, which is great. But uh, liking only goes so far. What you want to do is be able to have those people engage truly, which is liking sharing, um, saving for later, or even commenting, because those things all bump up your, um, your, I guess, credit score when it comes to, or your credibility uh, on Instagram algorithm. So yeah, it's, I could talk about that for ages because I know so much about that. So yeah. Well, then we need to uh, schedule another podcast talking about Instagram <laughs> yeah. analytics, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, something I, I found out quite recently in terms of the the algorithms, how they work, is that actually they're looking at, um, especially YouTube, YouTube more so, um, they're looking for people to actually engage with your content, right? So they can exactly. like it, they can follow you, but yeah. actually if they don't come back and engage again, then exactly. that like and that follow actually doesn't mean very much. Yeah. They want someone to stop, look, and then engage on a regular basis before that becomes a um, a signal for Instagram yeah. to boost your content because they think that people like it. Now TikTok is massively all about this. Uh, yeah. TikTok is is hacked that to the extreme. Yeah, they have. And people um, they know how long that someone will stick on a, on a video if it's good and and who to share it with. So. If you're on that video for less than a second, then that video is going to bomb because yeah. you they haven't hooked them, right? Yeah. And that's, that's exactly how YouTube works. And that's how Instagram, I'm assuming, works similarly. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. So they want people to stay on their app as long as possible. So uh, they try different tactics. I don't know if you've ever been on Instagram and like liking stuff or somebody likes your post you go and check out oh your notifications to say oh someone's like my thing who was that and then you close down the app but then it will re-notify you saying someone's liked your app uh, liked your thing again but you find out actually that's the exact same person it's just telling me again because it wants you to come back onto the app to then digest more content and oh it's weird don't like mm. it it's a bit it's a bit big Social brother dilemma. It's, yeah it's social dilemma if you've seen that on netflix no, the, the, no I haven't. okay yeah, have a look. Check it out. It's basically exactly that. It's the psychology of notifications, and yeah. um, it's it, it it. What's the name? Hypothalamus. It manipulates your hypothalamus to release dopamine every time you have a notification, and you really check it. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's a body oh, hack. Um, oh, essentially, God. <laughs> uh, uh, and they know how to get you to dump your dopamine into your bloodstream, and and it's massive. And actually, this is what makes um, social media so addictive. Um, yeah. And there's another point that actually that they're worried that kids in their formative years are essentially having this dopamine addiction yeah. to social media, and that's actually affecting their the mental health and the depression levels. So it, it's a massive problem that needs to be rectified, but no one knows how to do it. Um, yeah. So I actually, on my phone, I actually have all my notifications turned off for that very yeah. reason. I've turned that off on my, my yeah. Instagram. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. had to dedicate all my uh, notifications to literally be an icon on the app and then I have to click in rather than it telling me when someone's liked or interacted with something because... Yeah. No, you have to dedicate time to it rather than have it dedicate you. So, yeah, yeah I agree. 100%. So analytics of your stream, right? Yes. How are you using those analytics to know how you're doing, how that yeah. stream went, and then say, okay, this is what I did in this stream, and I had X amount extra um, viewers. Yeah. Um, uh, how do I then learn from that and then reiterate on that improvement? 
Okay. Uh, well, the the beautiful thing about uh, Twitch is it provides all of that for you. Literally, uh, it does it live as well as also at the end. And it even sends you an email with a summary of how well you did, um, how many people, unique viewers actually came into it. So it doesn't actually just show you the live viewers, but it will also show you how many people came onto your um, onto your stream and stayed there for a little bit while and might have gone, um, as well as how many people individually interacted. Um, I would say verbally, but you know what I mean by by text mm. or in the live chat or anything like that. Um, so what I normally do is if I want to try something out different or something out of the norm or just something new, um, I normally trial that out for um, two weeks. Uh, so. In, in stream in my stream in terms of that's probably two to three days worth of streaming for me um because i only stream for two hours at a time or so and yeah what i normally do is about two to three weeks of trialing um and that way i can actually get a true understanding of where i stand with it because sometimes your first stream about it might be really successful but the next week it might not be and then the week after it might be really successful again um so you can't really get a true figure until you've actually done the long haul nothing is immediate when it comes down to um streaming because no two days are the same unfortunately but the recipe that you have if you're doing the same thing over and over again it's just insane really you need to make sure that you're constantly tweaking to make sure uh your be reactive as well as also proactive with the audience that you have um so yeah i would say if you look at things from a, a a wider perspective and trial things out on a monthly basis rather than maybe a daily basis because it's it's easy to get wrapped up in the experience of be like oh i tried out something new and it was absolutely crap this day uh I'm never going to do this again. No, that's it. I've, I've thrown it out the window. But you've never really given it a, a fair shot, really, have you? So, yeah, I would say give it at least a few days. That way you've cycled through pretty much your existing audience as well as new audiences uh, to to then get a, a, a true figure or a true understanding of the ecosystem around the idea that you've had. Gotcha. Okay. So that's some really good... Um some uh, good advice if people were doing some um getting into streaming yeah so what about um how do you make money out of this right it's a part it's your job now you you actually do yeah. this for for a career um yeah. as well as your marketing so how do you make money out of it what what's the different avenues if you're offering all this for free what are you doing what are you where are you getting the money uh so uh, many things uh really so with me um i have my own youtube channel which uh one day this is a long con really so with that one day i'm gonna make money out of it uh because i'll get to the, a threshold and i'll have enough viewers on it where that i can have ad revenue for that uh with twitch specifically uh there are three no four now actually four ways you can actually make money on it so once you hit their um, affiliate program you can uh you get two forms of money through twitch which is bits which is kind of like the in website currency uh where people will pay money to have this in website currency called bits and then they can gift that to whatever streamer they want and uh equates to monetization for you so a thousand bits would be one uh no ten ten dollars yeah a thousand bits would be ten dollars worth of uh real money uh as well as also you've got subscriptions so subscriptions for the the joe blogs would be five pounds or four pounds fifty or something like that uh, for a subscription on tier one because there's three tiers there's tier two and tier three uh tier two is 15 dollars, and tier three is uh 25 quid or something like that it's a ridiculous amount of money but that's all for emotes so emojis like literally that's what they pay for um you can add your own value onto that but twitch actually takes half of that uh that 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 cut because they, they're a business they, they've got to make money so uh I make money through the gifting of bits uh, to me, as well as also people subscribing to my channel so they can actually have more rewards. So i.e. the emojis, 
there's also kind of uh, community benefits to it, as well as also uh, kind of like an interaction from me when when someone subscribes, I do something quite comical. It's kind of like triggering uh, a certain sound command uh, in on a, on a game or something like that. You you, you did the same with me. Uh, there's also the ways of sponsorships and affiliate programs. So with myself, I'm sponsored by a coffee company. So for every sale uh, that they have through my affiliate link, I get a large portion of the profits from that, uh, which is really good. Uh, you could also do brand deals as well. So say, for example, a company will approach you or you approach the company and uh, you'll promote their stuff for one of your one of your streams like uh or you'll promote like their website or anything like that and you could get monetization through that there's all sorts of things one of my favorite things to do is uh actually work and promote my merchandise because i am currently looking into making not only my merchandise for my streamer thing but i'm also working on making a clothing line completely separate but also bolstered by the fact that i stream and promote that because when it comes to myself, all I really know is streaming. So how can I apply that and the job that I'm doing now into the into my own revenue or line line? Yeah, clothing line. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that I've been passionate about for a while. Um, but streaming has allowed me to do that because I have the confidence to do it now and the positive reinforcement. Oh God, my uh, nose is so blocked. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> hard to talk. So so how, in terms of your um, money, in terms of the way it's split out, yeah, where would you say is the most profitable part of all of that? Where, where would you get the most money from? Uh, most money and most um, frequent would be from, from Twitch uh, directly for my subscriptions and bits. Uh, tips you can also receive as well, but that is something that you organize yourself. Um, and you provide like a donation link or a tip link and people could do that. It's like literally being like a waiter. Somebody will give you a tip for doing a good job. So it's exactly the same kind of principle. You don't, they don't expect anything from you. You're just get, receiving money for someone for, for a service that you've provided being that entertainment or even somebody to talk to, you know? So I would say directly from Twitch would be my pr most profitable because I've I've created enough value for somebody to actually want to subscribe. Understand. Right. Okay. And I think um, for me, I would think the sponsorship would have made you the most money, but I'm surprised that it's not been that. Um, no, no. Okay. No, definitely not. No. Um, I think with sponsorships, um, they are only as big as what I've made them so far. So I don't think I'm at that point where it's more profitable for me to do a brand deal. I, I think my brand is stronger than the brands that I work with at the moment. And I know that sounds really big headed, but it's more of the fact that like, um, I just haven't gotten to that point where I've dealt with large enough brands that they want to throw money at me rather mm. than be throw money at them. Okay, well, that makes sense. Well. Seeing as we're uh, talking about money, yeah, right, and there's a lot of people that own businesses uh, that are listening to this podcast, and they've seen the value of streaming. I mean, the thing that we haven't really covered actually is why streaming is is blown up so yeah. quickly, and that's because it's massively sticky, right? So yeah. viewers tend to stick around for longer than other platforms like YouTube. And um, and I think I read some stats somewhere that according to, to Twitch, um, they would say this, but their average user spends 95 minutes per day watching gaming, right? That, that's a lot, yeah. that's an hour and a half every day versus something like 32 minutes on Instagram. Now, if you've got that audience captured and they're coming back and they're staying for at least an hour and a half every day, you can make money from that, right? Yeah. So how can a business benefit from streaming? What, what is it, you know, that, th I'm trying to think of an idea that is so outlandish that, you know, you'd say, well, that'll never be, be benefited from streaming. But there must be certain niches and topics that would make sense um, to do streaming. So how, okay. what, what, what do you think? 
Uh, well, I think streaming is just another evolution of uh, marketing, really, for a business uh, and also brand uh, brand building for themselves. Uh, just remember, like, I'm part of this, the gaming community or whichever, but streaming as 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 a beast and as a as a form or an entity is literally so many avenues so a business could make it into something like a talk show a talk show where they talk about things that they're interested in or as the business is doing and make it interactive they could have it as a like a shareholders meeting anything that they want to make it and that's the beauty of streaming it literally can be anything that they want to be uh, i've seen kfc like uh, we were talking about earlier kfc has gone into the gaming realm it's it's ridiculous there are so many companies that actually endorse gamers or streamers uh, who do like ASMR or talk shows or anything like that. But they've also got their own channels where they also uh, talk about things that interest them or they might have somebody who's part of the marketing team like uh, play some games or answer questions that they have. They, it, it could be used as such an important tool because you'll see uh, on YouTube, you'll have the long form content where it's like half an hour of them talking about their brand or ideas that they have or uh, how they got from a to b but imagine turning that into a live stream where you can ask uh, answer those questions that really gets to the crux of things they actually they're actually interacting with a human being instead of something that they're only ever going to get one answer from because it's just a video so i think that if you turned to streaming as a business, you would be able to, done correctly, make a lot of money out of it because of the opportunities you'd create for yourself. Yeah, I think it's it's really knowing your target audience as well, yeah. isn't it? I mean, if you yeah. know what they're going to actually tune in and watch, then 100%. Yeah, uh, you're going to get a sticky audience. I mean, I've been I've been watching it on YouTube, YouTube Live, and stuff like that, where people are coding live or yeah. they're creating videos live. Uh, yeah, they're basically creating the content. They're doing a live, creating the content for YouTube. The content, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like there's, it's there's, <laughs> there's meta meta layers of uh, of of kind of Inception esque um, diving there, but. I think for me, I'm definitely interested in starting to do it myself um, and maybe like um, my have a create a community where people can ask me questions directly instead of, yeah. um, you know, around the the topic of being a CTO and, and how technology can help them. So uh, yeah. watch this space because I, I think I'll be um, coming uh, onto the platforms shortly. So I think um, it's going to be massive streaming. I think it's, it's, it's growing, you know, year on year. Um, and I don't actually know what the future of it looks like. And I don't know whether it just becomes another platform like TV or, you know, because millennials are really engaging in this. Gen Z are really engaging in this. Mm what is the future what i mean obviously you thought about this and in, in terms of the vision of where you're going but what's the vision of streaming i think um it's the vision of streaming is uh kind of the utilization or the birth of influence uh, yeah influencer i was going to say influenza then like <laughs> like i can't know uh, uh influencer becoming the new norm because you see at the moment it, influencers are being used by everyday brands now to promote their their businesses or whichever. I think they'll have at some point or another, streaming will become uh, just part of the package of um, having their own inbuilt influencers. So, say for example, they've built them from a the ground up. It could be uh, Joe Bloggs from off the street. We've employed him to work for, say for example, Louis Vuitton, and then they become a, a Louis Vuitton influencer who is completely owned by that business who then goes and interacts and just adds more humanistic values rather than an entity as a business D does that make sense mm. i think streaming in the future is going to become so part of the package of everyday life and uh, business marketing um, that 
we won't even bat an eyelid. It will literally just be that. Uh, I don't know if you saw, I, I think you might have shared it on LinkedIn, actually. Did you see the the factory or I well I say a factory it's just a giant hall full in Japan of influencers they have influencer ac- academies and it's literally rows and rows of people stood in front of a camera learning how to talk in front of the camera because Japan have invested so much money into that and it's exactly the same thing it's already happening elsewhere in in Japan so I think it's only a matter of time that you see it in the USA and in the UK and everything. It's it's crazy. Absolutely bizarre. I need to find that video so I can share it to you because I didn't even know it existed until That's the that, other day. Yeah. I did know about China yeah. uh, that they have like almost like a factory of, of streamers going yeah. live. Um, and they basically go to a building because they got the, the guaranteed equipment and guaranteed uh, internet connection. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Half the world is connected to the internet. Yeah. Okay. Imagine when the other half join, right? And then you got the likes of Elon Musk's Starlink. Oh right? God. And, yeah. and they can connect to a super fast internet. This, and, and this is why I'm telling people you need to get yeah. out there on the internet because there's a whole world is about to explode onto yeah. the internet. It is like, uh, it's, it's a scary thought, but it's a very interesting thought that uh, all these things that we think are so foreign and we don't really understand yet is actually growing faster than we ever could have expected. Like nobody would have expected uh, streaming to be a big thing, but in the span of like, what was it? Since I think streaming on t- Twitch, I think it's been eight years it's been around, but in the last two, three years, it's become... <sighs> so profitable for amazon it's just a drop in the ocean for them like but it's it's crazy absolutely that, crazy and that's down to the devices itself right devices are almost plateaued you, you, yeah you can get faster devices but actually yeah. for about three years they've not really you've not really needed a new ipad or iphone or computer no. right so no and, and i've got the iphone 12 and i can attest to that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, and same, I got the iPhone 10 and I need to be upgraded to the 12. And and I, you know, I looked at it and went, do you know what? I just don't need it. I'd rather invest in a DSLR camera. And that's what I did. Yeah. With about the same cost. So uh, it just shows you. Right. Okay. We're coming to the end of this podcast. Really fantastic um, advice and insight there. So what about your three quick wins that will accelerate your streaming reach? I'm so glad that I wrote this down. Uh, so I would say um, increase your human reach. Um, be aware of the content that you produce and remember to kind of, I would say tiny tweaks would be more beneficial to you and the, this, the stuff that you produce rather than big changes because you're only ever going to expect big things if you make big changes whereas if you make tiny tweaks to the the stuff that you already produce you're you're only ever going in with the expectation of maybe a little bit of change or a little bit of an increase when actually you'll be surprised those tiny tweaks actually amount to a lot of difference so yeah 100 percent that would be one of mine um next one would be treat all social platforms as unique entities and not as uh, similar means so that means get to understand the tools that you have around you. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. Remember, they they all have their own algorithms, but remember that they're all individual platforms and they need to be treated as such. You can't expect the same message to be sent across and expect the same results back. So make sure that the content that you have has been repurposed and made unique to each platform. Um, and then the last one is, uh, recognize that if you are going into streaming, that you become the brand. So if you're a business and you want to make that into a brand, that's, you've already got a brand in built. You're already ahead of the game for a lot of people by at least a year or two. So if you go in there with a brand already made, my God, you're going to hit the ground running. But remember if you're going in with no brand, in mind at that time, you're going to become that brand and you need to represent your best self every single time because 
Otherwise, you're going to be under the microscope a few years down the line. So make sure you're on your best form. I love those. Really good. Uh, people are going to get so much value from those. So, uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, right. Okay, so streaming, where can people go? What resources are available if they want to get into streaming? Uh, so street where they can find me do you mean or do you do you no, so like you know? how can they learn more about streaming what, uh, what's the resources um so you can easily say i would say go on to youtube with myself um if you want to know about streaming a little bit more and i kind of the intricacies of it i would say go on to instagram and type in hashtag um streamer tips i pretty much own the the dominant side of the tips on there uh, for streamers because that's the kind of niche that I focused on for quite some time and I saw some exponential growth through that. Um, if you want tools or anything, I would uh, probably go on to Stream Elements because not only do they provide you with all the tools that you need to get started, but they also provide you with the kind of it, uh, the bots and the software as well. I use them on a day-to-day -day basis. And I wish I used them when I first ever started streaming. So hundred uh, percent tools wise, look at stream elements uh, or stream labs, depending on which one you want. Uh, if you want ease, I would say stream labs. If you want to uh, have something crisp and robust, then I would say stream elements. Yeah. Great. And how can people connect with you? Where can they find you? you can find me pretty much everywhere <laughs> i'll be honest um so you can find me on twitter uh which is uh the bat nut because that's the username that i use and the kind of brand that i've built so the bat nut uh all one word all connected um you can find me on twitter instagram youtube uh TikTok, um and also linkedin but linkedin isn't the bat nut it's just tom young <laughs> but uh yeah if you want to find me anywhere else it's literally all those social platforms under the bat nut and then on twitch it's literally twitch.tv forward slash the bat nut i hope a lot of these viewers go and watch you because it's it's really intriguing to see um a streamer in action it's almost voyeur-esque you know mm. where I'm, I'm i'm watching your inside life and the, the brain to, um kind of working away and uh and and you're very much you're very vocal as well in terms of what you're thinking which i yeah. guess you have to be right so yeah. people otherwise it's going to be silent <laughs> yeah, <So>. exactly <laughs> yeah get used to, to talking to yourself because yeah. that's literally all i do for a living now fantastic thanks tom really appreciate your time on this i uh i, I implore people to go and to see you on um youtube and twitch thank you yeah thank you very much no problem. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed that podcast. You can tell Tom is a born entertainer. What did you think about his quick wins for streaming? Quick win number one, be aware of the content you produce and iteratively improve using tiny tweaks for compound interest. Quick win number two, treat each social media platform differently, adapt the messages for the relative audience. And quick win number three, remember you are the brand and if you have a brand already, you'll hit the ground running. But what was your favorite bit of the show? Tell me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, where you can find me with at symbol hair digital. That's at hair digital. And don't forget, you can also watch this show on YouTube or listen on any major podcast platform, including Apple and Spotify. And don't forget, we have a competition running at the moment. I'm giving away 10 of my favorite business books, including Lean Startup and Business Model Canvas to one lucky winner. Now, these are great for all levels of skill, from a CEO to a founder. To enter, all you need to do is go to Apple Podcasts, subscribe, then scroll to the bottom and leave a review. And it doesn't have to be detailed, you can just say that you love this podcast. So email quickwinceo at hair.digital with a copy of your review. Now, thank you for listening. And until next time, I'm your Quick Win CEO, signing out.